Mode set. Executing. What's up gamers, it's your boy CD-ROM 1019. Welcome back to Escape from Monkey Island. Okay, so we made it to Jambalaya Island and we have got a lot of work to do. Let's take a quick look at this painting. It's got a map on one side and a picture of the ultimate insult on the other. The ultimate insult looks like it's comprised of three parts. A silver monkey head, a bronze hat, and a golden man. I wonder how it works. Hmm, golden man, a silver monkey head, and a bronze hat. All right, well, let's go looking around, I guess. Big time. Hey, set sail for family fun. No, could it be? See, souvenirs of it's Guybrush Murray. Streetwood's most famous hat. Murray? Murray the evil skull? Guybrush? Guybrush, the mortal pirate? Wow, it is a small world after all. How did you escape from Monkey Island? The last time I saw you, you were sitting on a shelf in LeChuck's demonic amusement park. Ah, that's a tale of heart-stopping malice and evil. Mm, naturally. It all started a few months ago. As usual, I was sitting on my shelf, working on my plans to conquer the world. <laughs> Suddenly, the amusement park exploded with a blast of demonic heck fire! Uh... It was those hydrogen-filled LeChuck balloons, right? I knew they were trouble. No, it was LeChuck. Apparently, his flaming beard melted its way through his icy tomb, freeing him. I knew I should have given him a shave before I left. But what uh, caused the explosive blast of demonic heck fire? Oh, he was just letting off a little steam. Steam, get it? <laughs> hey, I thought it was funny. Hmm. So after LeChuck escaped, how did you end up here? After his escape, LeChuck began destroying his theme park in a fit of demonic rage. Although personally, I think he was just colossally embarrassed by the whole thing. I mean, really, what kind of a demonically evil scheme involves roller coasters and cotton candy anyway? Enough editorializing. How'd you wind up here? Oh, that. Well, one of the explosions flung me out to sea, where, ironically, I landed on the shattered remnants of a midway dart game. After weeks at sea, I drifted ashore on this delightfully evil isle, where Ozzy Mandrill, a man after my own blackened soul, gave me a job at this fine establishment. Mwah! Hmm. You know, the tale of your exodus wasn't particularly filled with heart-stopping malice and evil. Are you kidding? It had LeChuck, Ozzy, and yours truly. How much more evil can you get? Good point. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm the greeter slash bouncer of Planet Threepwood. The creme de la creme in pirate theme family style, altogether evil dining. Murray! All right, I added the evil part. So apparently there's a Planet Threepwood now, a, f a family restaurant that's themed after Guybrush and his adventures. I can't imagine how you could be a very good bouncer. Why not? Well, for starters, you've got no arms. Evil needs no arms. Watch! You, over there with the face! Who, who me? Yes, you! I want you out of the restaurant now! Oh, but I'm not... Talk to the hand, mortal! Uh, what hand? Don't play smart with me, fleshbag! Out, out, out! <laughs> Impressive. I don't imagine you get much repeat business, though. So, how do you like this job? Personally, I preferred it when I was just the greeter. It really allowed me plenty of time to work on my evil dreams. But when Floppo the Bouncer Monkey ran away, they needed someone to double on bouncer duty, and I really needed the money. Murray, what do you need money for? To finance my diabolical schemes, of course. Do you have any idea how much it costs to hire a fleet of Scandinavian barbarians these days? Hmm. How would you like to become an integral part of a powerful voodoo talisman? Is it an evil talisman? Potentially. What's it called? The ultimate insult. The ultimate... Don't be naive, mortal. The ultimate insult is too powerful to be wielded by the likes of you. But I need a headpiece, and you'd be perfect. See? You fool! This diagram clearly indicates you need a monkey head. I am a human head. Well, I just thought... Well, think a little harder. I want no part of this ultimate insult tomfoolery. Oh, all right. Uh, I've got to go. Stop by any time for more pirate-themed fun and evil. <laughs> nice talking to you, Murray. Okay, so... Oh, I made it. What a jolly-looking statue, but it looks like someone's taken a crowbar to its head. Oh, that might be the brass hat that we're missing. 
Not you. Get out of my way, dude. Tiny Lafitte. Cuyus Prida S? Dang it. More Latin. Now I wish I'd bought that Latin for Scummy's book. Pardon me. Yes. Uh. You know where I can find pieces? Do you know where I can find the pieces of the ultimate insult? Is that a fruit flavored drink over at Planet Three Wood? No, it's a dangerous voodoo talisman of an inexplicably soul crunching power. Its pieces are supposed to be somewhere on Jambalaya Island. Ooh, a scavenger hunt. How thrilling. Maybe I can help. What do the pieces look like? Well, you seemed enamored with the statue, so can you tell me about this uh, pirate hat? One of the pieces looks like a bronze pirate hat. A bronze pirate hat? That's interesting. Why? Take a good look at this statue, boyo. Do you really think the bronze hat I'm looking for could have come from this statue? Well, that'd be my guess. Hmm. I've had just about enough talking about the ultimate insult for now. Fair enough. Sorry to bother you. No bother at all, Bean. Well, we know where we know what we need, but where we can find it is going to be another thing entirely. Uh, oop, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go here. Star Buccaneers Coffee, home of expensive espressos and gentrified Java. Star Buccaneers. It's an empty Star Buccaneers Grogachino cup. Hmm, there's an empty cup on the window. I wonder if we could use that. Hmm. Looks like we can. Let's take it over to this gentleman over here. Whoop, nope. Darn it. Get back in there. There's a lady over here with a bag. Looks like she's got some stuff. I wonder if we can mess with her. Touristy stuff, mostly. Lots of coffee and a Star Buccaneers logo coffee cup. Hmm. There's a sale on coffee beans. Oh, my word. Really? Oops. My mistake. You almost gave me a heart attack. That was surprisingly easy. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's... Oh. Welcome to Star Buccaneers Coffee House. Can I help you, sir? Uh, I'd like a co- Oh, jeez. I'd like a coffee drink. Excellent. We have many fine drinks to choose from. Mm. I'll have your coffee of the day. Our featured coffee is the iced Gragaccino. I'll have one of those, then. You don't happen to offer free refills, do you? You betcha, sir. I'll take care of that for you. Well, how fortunate they offer Can't free refills. Can't get enough of my sweet coffee goodness, can you? Uh... Just get me my Gragaccino, please. All righty. Coming right up. Have a nice day, and visit us again soon. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll hold on to that for now. What are these? It's a tray full of mini bagels with some kind of weird pasty goop on top. That goop you are referring to is Star Buccaneer's own Schmear Whiz, a wonderfully delightful blend of artificial cream cheese and salmon lock bits with the convenience of a spray-on can. Um, great. We're giving away free samples today as a promotion, so please help yourself. Hmm, that does sound somewhat good. Let's pick one up. And let's try it. Well... Here goes nothing. Oh. Good gravy, that tastes horrible. Hmm. Okay, well, that was a thing. All right, let's leave. And let's take a look around Jambalaya Island. What is this over here? Oh, goody. It's Stan. It's our old buddy, Stan. Stan's new building sure is festive looking. Hello, Stan. Stan? Is that you? Why, if it isn't my old friend, yeah, Bob. It's Guybrush. Of course it is, of course it is. Welcome to Stan's Real Estate Emporium, where a deal's a deal and the real estate is real. Tell me about these pamphlets. Do yourself a favor and read them. They're full of all sorts of great information about stands, timeshares. Take one, they're free. That's now. the kind of guy I am. Just giving things away. All right, I will happily take one. Uh, I thought you were selling life insurance. Turned into a dead end. Get it? Dead end? <laughs> 
Seriously, no money in it anymore. It just dried up. Why? All my clients were dying and becoming ghosts just to collect on their policies. Oh, well, gotta remain flexible, kid. You know what I mean? Timeshares are the wave of the future. <laughs> Why is your desk outside? Ah, it's a beautiful day. How can you work inside on a day like this? Mm, yeah, there's that. Why are you really outside? Why are you really outside? Just a mm, small problem with the local vermin. It's the problem that's small. The vermin themselves are actually quite large. But it's nothing to worry about. It'll be taken care of right away. It's just a minor setback. What's important is that the timeshare units are, legally speaking, practically vermin-free. Okay. You're hawking real estate now? Timeshares, my good man. Looking for a second home? Investment property? A little extra income? Look no further. You can't afford not to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And for the next 24 hours, for just listening to my pitch, you get a coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Threepwood. Limit one per customer while supplies last. Void where prohibited by law and in the state of Wyoming. Monkey mug? Well, give, give me the pitch. pitch. Smart decision, my friend. You'll thank me after you've heard about this exciting opportunity. Stay with me. The full pitch takes mm, just under three hours. Beep. Be prepared to be stunned by what I have to tell you. What's the best investment for your hard-earned cash? The stock market? No, too volatile. Duck food futures. No, ducks have short lifespans. Porcelain figurines. <laughs> Uh-oh, oops, too fragile. What then? Two words, time, share. That's right. Real estate. Let me show you how a small investment today can compound into an incredible fortune in just a few short generations. <laughs> so, who's excited and ready to invest, huh? Hey, wake up. Huh? Huh? Oh. You must have dozed off, pal. Oh, sorry. Hey, no skin off my nose. I'm not the one that's gonna miss out on this once in a millennium opportunity. Come back when you're ready to hear the whole pitch. You know where to find me. Uh, okay, well, I'll just be on my way. You can't afford to wait too long. This deal won't last. Hmm. Okay, well, Stan has a big pitch and Guybrush can't keep himself awake. So let's, uh, why don't we use this, uh, Gragachino to keep ourselves up. Woohoo! Talk about dry openers. I feel like I just drank an entire coffee plantation, donkeys and all. Hi, Stan. What can I do for you, young man? Tell me more about this timeshare deal. It'd be my pleasure, my pantaloon friend. Do you have the to be all twitchy now. to take advantage <laughs> of this once in a lifetime opportunity? As a bonus, just for listening to my pitch, I'll give you a coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Threepwood. Limit one per customer while supplies last. Void where prohibited by law and in the state of Wyoming. Give me the pitch. Smart decision, my friend. You'll thank me after you've heard about this exciting opportunity. Stay with me. The full pitch takes just under three hours. Be, be prepared to be stunned by what I have to tell you. What's the best investment for your hard-earned cash? The stock market? No, too volatile. Duck food futures. No, ducks have short lifespans. Porcelain figurines. <laughs> Uh-oh, oops, too fragile. What then? Two words, time, share. That's right, real estate. Let me show you how a small investment today can compound into an incredible fortune in just a few short generations. So, who's excited and ready to invest, huh? Uh, gosh, that sounds interesting, but I need to check with my wife first. You bet, gotta check with the missus. Wouldn't want to wind up in the old doghouse. <laughs> right. I mean, where would the piranha poodles sleep? Right, well, thanks for listening. Have this coupon for a free monkey mug at Planet Threepwood from your old friend, Stan. Thank you, Stan. All right, so... I'll just be on my way. You can't afford to wait too long. This deal won't last. I don't think he's going to help me with anything else, but I think I can open the drawer? Uh, no. Hang on. There's something else he's got here that should help be helpful. Oh, wait. It's a pretty standard desk drawer. Oh, darn it, that's... Oh, I think the Gragachino's wearing off. All right. Um... Use this drawer. There's just some fuzzy lint balls in here. Okay, how about this one? Just a bunch of paper in here. There's just some fuzzy lint balls in here. I could have sworn I could use something in one of these desk drawers. 
unless I have to open the... Move, Guybrush. Why are you stuck there? Oh. Oh, a jar of glue. I need that for something. Okay. Maybe that's what I was I was looking for. I don't think I can... Um, I don't think I can open his... Uh, why do I keep getting stuck there? All right. I don't think I can interact with his, um, with his... No, I can't. Okay, let's leave. Hmm. Free monkey mug. That sounds like one of the pieces we need. Let's go see if we can cash in on that. Oh, Amy. Set sail for family fun at Planet Threepwood. See souvenirs of Guybrush Threepwood's most famous escapade. Talk to the waitress. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. Would you like to hear about today's special? I don't look anything like Elaine. Uh, I'd love to hear about today's special. We call it Stan's Budget Bologna Sub. It's four pieces of bologna, ham, and turkey smothered in three types of cheese on rye bread. Ew. <laughs> That's funny. We've been getting that reaction all day. What kind of place is this, anyway? This is Planet Threepwood, one of a chain of restaurants dedicated to showcasing the exploits of the Tri-Island area's most famous pirate, Guybrush Threepwood. Ah, that explains why it looks like my life has been vomited all over the walls. Excuse me? I'm Guybrush, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm not too thrilled about this place. <laughs> That's a good one, sir. What? Everyone knows that Guybrush Threepwood is about six foot four, has a scar about yay long over his left eye and a big black parrot. No, really, I can prove it. Ask me something only Guybrush Threepwood would know. Okay. What are your parents' names? Oh, that's not fair. John and Martha? Ha! Everyone knows their names were Fred and Ginger. I didn't. Then maybe you aren't really Guybrush Threepwood. I guess not. So, who are you supposed to be? I'm Elaine Marley, the pirate princess of Melee Island. Hey, baby. You can be my Elaine anytime. What? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Whose brilliant idea was this, anyway? Planet Threepwood is a wholly owned subsidiary of Ozymandrel Enterprises. I should have guessed. I think I'm ready to order. What'll it be? What have you got? <sighs> it's all on the menu. Call me after you've read it. Gee, she's just as snippy as the real Elaine. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. Oh, um, you know what? Never mind. Hang on. Come to think of it, I need a few more minutes. Let me know when you're ready to order. I need to give her the coupon. I think I'm supposed to present this after I order some food. This coupon is redeemable at any Planet Threepwood Diner oh. and is good for one Silver Monkey mug meal. Offer expires 1225, void where prohibited. Not valid in conjunction with any other offers or to employees or slaves of the Planet Threepwood conglomerate. Promotion subject to change, so don't bug us if it does. Uh, okay. Um, I guess I gotta just order food first then. Um, is there a menu I can look at? Looks like they managed to get their hands on some of Elaine's stuff. Glove, music box, plastic ice cream cone. Uh, Elaine's gonna have an aneurysm when she finds out about this. Uh, where is the menu? Unless it's on one of the tables. I don't see it though. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. I think I'm ready to order. What'll it be? What have you got? <sighs> It's all on the menu. Call me after you've read it. Gee, she's just as snippy as the real Elaine. All right, uh, I'm going to have to find the menu, I guess. I don't remember where it is. Uh... Oh, dear. Oh, it's over here. Duh. Okay. Great chefs of the Tri-Island area. No, not Stainless that. steel chef, copper chef, tin chef. I've never heard of any of these guys. On today's menu is Swordmaster's Delight, Guybrush's Mighty Pirate Burger, Lobster LeChuck, and Elaine's Caesar Salad. Big mighty pirates like myself can't live on salads. Today's special drinks are Largo's Lemonade and Fat Fizz. Interesting. References everywhere. All right, Elaine. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Elaine, and I'll be your waitress this afternoon. I'm ready to order. I think I'm ready to order. What'll it be? Uh, pirate Burger. Guybrush's Mighty Pirate Burger sounds good. I thought it might. And to drink? Uh, Largo's Lemonade. Largo's Lemonade will be fine. Good choice, sir. And how will you be paying? 
I have this coupon. Check out this Mega Monkey meal ticket. Very good, sir. Please note that due to the unexpectedly high demand, we are no longer providing the entree portion of the meal for coupon-bearing customers. However, you will still receive your complimentary beverage in the ceremonial monkey mug. I guess I should go sit down. Ceremonial, you say? Interesting. So, it sounds like they're not gonna let me leave with that, and I'm not willing to go through another three-hour pitch. So let's figure out how we can make it out of here with that. Um, I'll pick up the mug. And then use the I don't the think you'd like that. I don't think you'd like that. Well, can I get up? I don't think you'd like Those things really don't go together. I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to ask you to relinquish the monkey mug. You're not allowed to keep it. Uh, I wasn't gonna keep it, really. Okay, yeah, they're definitely not gonna let me leave with it. Um, I need to speak to this other pirate. There must be some way to grab it, but make them think it's still here. Oh, talk to Jolly Pirate. Excuse me. There we go. Yes, would you like a free pirate caricature? Why, yes, I would. Sure, why not? Wonderful, just a moment. like about pirates they're so active and healthy you know all that sword fighting and sailing really outdoorsy stuff what's your favorite pirate activity uh, sword i'm fight. partial to the clang of a good sword fight although sometimes when the swords don't hit together cleanly it makes this awful screech sound you know what else i like about pirates they're wacky madcap accessories pegs patches parrots hooks they're just so damned whimsical what's your favorite pirate accessory i guess those peg legs are pretty funny looking of course, most of those guys lost their legs to gangrene and sharks, so it's not really ha-ha funny. You know what I can't figure out about pirates? I shudder to think. What do they do in their spare time? They can't spend their entire lives fighting, sailing, and lynching, can they? I guess not. Of course not. So, what do you think pirates do in their off hours? If what I've heard is true, more and more pirates are spending their free time on the internet. I have no idea what it is, but I'll try to draw it. Yes. Done. Here you are, sir. Thank you for your patronage, and enjoy your visit to the happiest island on Earth. Thanks. Take a look at this caricature. Uh. It's a reasonably good caricature of me with the silver monkey mug, with a sword and a peg leg, swinging a dead mouse around while entangled in a fishing net. If this picture was on an actual mug, it could actually pass as the real thing. Could it? If it was dark, and the person looking was stupid. And I ripped my face out of the picture first. You don't say. Well then, let's test that theory. The caricature won't stay on the mug by itself. Right. That's why I needed the glue. Now I can stick this on something. There we go. Whoop. No, 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 no. Gee, this might actually pass as the real thing. Well, okay. I don't know, but... I don't think that would help anything. Whoop. Let's see. Use with the monkey mug. All right, well. Excuse me. Oops, no, no, I don't need to talk to you anymore. You already got a caricature. Don't be greedy. All right, get up. Well, I'll be. She fell for it. All right, let's leave before she figures it out. Okay, that's one piece down. Let's get a refill on our coffee. Oh, I made it. Welcome to Starbuck and Here's Coffee House. 
Can I help you, sir? Uh, I'd like a refill. I'd like a coffee drink. Excellent. We have many fine drinks to choose from. Uh, yeah. I'll have your coffee of the day. Our featured coffee is the iced Gragaccino. I'll have one of those then. Still offering that free refill? You betcha, sir. I'll take care of that for you. Can't get enough of my sweet coffee goodness, can you? Uh, just get me my Gragaccino, please. Alrighty. Coming right up. Have a nice day and visit us again soon. All right. We are leaving. Okay. So, another part of Nutton or the uh, Jambalaya Island What's I haven't that? seen yet. Let's see here. Hmm. Diving contest. And it looks like they have a golden man. Whoa. Nice dive. Thank you, my friend. I fear that my skills have atrophied as of late, though. I'm not half the diver I used to be. That was one of the best plank dives I've ever seen. And who are you that would take such pains to flatter an aging plank diver? Uh, Guybrush Threepwood. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. I'm a mighty pirate. Ah, a pirate. It's rare to encounter a genuine pirate on Jambalaya Island these days. So I noticed. Well, Mr. Muddy Pirate, my name is Marco De Pollo, and I am the greatest plank diver in the world. Hmm, really? Are you really the greatest diver in the world? Yes. I have spent years searching the planet for someone who could better me in the art of the plank dive, but to no avail. How sad. What are you doing on Jambalaya Island? Ah, that is an interesting story. Is it a short story? About a year ago, I despaired of ever finding my diving equal and was prepared to hang up my trunks forever. Ugh. At this crucial moment, Senior Ozzy Mandrill approached me with an intriguing proposition. A am I old enough to hear this? He told <laughs> me that he was building the tallest artificial plank diving platform in the world and that he was willing to pay obscene amounts of money to have the world's greatest plank diver compete on it on a daily basis. Since I was ready to retire in any event, I figured, why not retire in the comfort of a luxury resort island? Makes sense to me. Besides, there's always the chance that someone will come along who can finally challenge my skills. Hmm, well that is today, my friend. Has your arrangement with Ozymandro proven challenging? Sadly, no. But at least I'm receiving a steady stream of income. Okay. I'm looking for the pieces of the ultimate insult. What would I know of such things? I'm looking for a golden man. One of the pieces is a golden man of some sort. Hmm. How peculiar. This solid gold all-world diving trophy looks like a golden man of some sort. It's over by the judge's table. Perhaps you're not the best person to ask about the ultimate insult. Perhaps not. How did you get into plank diving anyway? Ah, that is a story rife with melancholy. Arjutur, you wish to hear it. Are you kidding? I love stories rife with melancholy. Very well. It begins with my father, Count Francisco Alvarez de Pollo. He was a man of peculiar moods and eccentricities. In one of his so-called lighter moments, he named his only son Marco, much to the consternation of his wife and extended family. Why the fuss? I take it you have never been in a public swimming pool. <laughs> Pirates don't have much use for him. Ah, then allow me to elaborate. At the tender age of six, I was sent to my first swimming lesson. Oh, how I happily splashed about, taking to the water like a worm to dirt. Suddenly, someone shouted my name. Marco! I turned to see who it was. Before I could find who had called my name, Everyone in the pool shouted in response, Poyo! I couldn't understand what was happening. Why were they shouting my name in such an annoying scene, song, <laughs> manner? Why were they closing their eyes to my obvious torment? I, I tried to get them to stop, but they just kept chanting my name over and over again. Marco! Poyo! Unable to tolerate it any further, I climbed to the highest diving board in the pool and cannonballed into the center of the taunting masses as I hit the water with a resounding splash. The haunting chants of my classmates finally gave way to comforting screams of terror. What a horrible story. Yes, but at least I gained a lucrative career out of my childhood trauma. Hmm, you don't say. 
All right. Um... Do you still dive to drown out the voices of the taunting children? Oh, no. Now I'm in it for the thrill of victory and the lure of a fat paycheck. The fact that it provides a temporary bomb to my permanent psychological damage is purely a side benefit. That's good. I hate to think there was something weird going on here. Hmm. So is this diving competition open to anyone? Hardly. If I were to compete against everyone who wanted to get their hands on a solid gold old world diving trophy, I'd be diving 24 hours a day. Oh, so who do you dive against? The judges panel over there does an excellent job of weeding out the poseurs from the serious divers. I'd like to dive against you. You want to dive against me? <laughs> ah! Thank you, little friend, for bringing laughter back into my life. What's so funny? Don't tell me you're serious. As serious as scurvy, diver boy. It's not wise to trifle with me, Mr. Thripwood. I am the greatest diver in the world. Second greatest, you mean. Very well. The gauntlet has been thrown. I suppose you have been certified by the judging committee? Certified? Do you think I am some sort of clown who accepts the challenges of every two-shilling braggart that comes my way? Um, yes? If you want to die, go to the judges' committee and get certified. Hmm, okay then. I just remembered a previous engagement. Bye. Let's go get certified then. Hello, folks. Excuse me. Hey, hey, little dude. What's up? Uh, I'd like to take a crack at winning I'd like to take a crack at winning that diving trophy. You and dozens of other gold-hunting wannabes. If you wish to dive, you must be certified first. Why? We could leave ourselves open to most grievous lawsuits if we let physically uncool people try to dive. Now, if you just step behind the table... There won't be any word problems, will there? Hey, what are you doing with that? Please turn to the right, dude. You're not gonna put that there, are you? No, then. Let me know when this begins to hurt. Ouch! <laughs> and another thing. I think the staple gun was completely uncalled for. Be that as it may, you have passed the physical. Really? Don't act so shocked. You'd have to be a palsy-ridden grandmother to fail. Here's your certificate. Feel free to challenge our champion diver whenever you want to dive. Oh, all right, let's take a crack at it then. Hey, look what I got. So, you've managed to get yourself certified. Ah! I've seen palsy-ridden grandmothers with better qualifying scores. So, are you challenging me to a dive-off then? You better believe it. Then, prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco DePoyo is about to attempt a spinning swordsman. Alpha monkey. Keel hall. Combination. All right, Let's give him complete moves. silence for this dive. Frankie's doors, Thripwood. Long journey upwards. Seagulls up here, they look huh? really hungry. No wonder. I don't think there's any fish up here. Hungry seagulls, you don't say. Okay, so. Okay, okay spinning. I got one of them right. Um. Not the monkeys to the left. Darn. I wasn't that bad, was I? Rats. The winner and the steel all world prank diving champion is Marco de Pollo. All right. So part of the problem is that I need to I need to um, 
mimic his moves. So I know Alpha Monkey is to the left. Spinning Swordsman I don't know about yet. Uh, we weren't going to figure that out on the first try anyway. So let's uh, look at this pamphlet. It looks like the judge is on here. It's a golden trophy of a man in a classic no, arms overhead bad. diving pose. For sure. Hey, there's a picture of that grouchy diving judge in here. And that must be his beautiful blonde wife that he's with. Blonde wife, you say? Pardon me. What? What was wrong with my last dive? It sucked. Could you be more specific? Nope. <laughs> Why are you giving me such low scores? Look, kid, it's nothing personal. It's just that I've got an expensive red-headed wife, two expensive red-headed kids, and an expensive red-headed dog to feed, you follow? Not really. Then let me spell it out for you. Mr. Mandrill pays me a lot of money to make sure that Mr. DePoyo always wins. I think I'll leave you to your grouchiness. Whatever. A red-headed wife, you say? Well, then explain this. Why are you showing me this? I don't rightly know. Oh, right, I gotta look at it again. Hey, there's a picture of that grouchy diving judge in here, but that blonde he's with is definitely not his lovely red-headed wife. Okay. Watch this. It's a brochure for Stan's Jambalaya Timeshare Emporium. Yeah? So? Take a look at page three. Yikes! I think your red-headed wife would be very interested to find out about the time you've been sharing with this blonde, don't you? You got it all wrong, kid. She's just a friend of the family. Really? Really? Oh, well, then I guess your wife won't mind if I show her the brochure. Wait! Stop! What do you want? What's it worth to you? I've got money, jewels, property, anything. Just don't tell my wife. Fine. All I want is a fair diving competition. That's all? Really? Really? Do we have a deal? Deal. It won't do you any good, though. DePoyo's too good to be beaten by a flat-headed loser like you. Okay, so that's one problem taken care of. The old guy will say that we have to mimic his moves, and the, the guy in the middle will say that we're making too big of a splash. So I'm just going to dive against him again just to see if I can figure out this, um, I'm back. So this arrow see. system. What can I do for you, Mr. Thripwood? Now I'm ready to dive against you now. Then prepare to be humiliated, Mr. Thripwood. Marco Di Poya is about to attempt a rum barrel, keel horn, alpha monkey combination. Let's give him complete silence for this time. Thank you, George. Threepwood. All right, let's see if I can get some of this right. I know Alpha Monkey's to the left, so Rum Barrel, and Keel Hall, Alpha Monkey. Okay, so Keel Hall is up. Darn. It's nice to see that good old-fashioned blackmail still works in some parts of this modern world. Rants. Okay, I think I'm getting Oh, it. here's a big surprise. Marco de Pollo has won again. Okay, so the middle judge, well, let's just talk to him. Uh, pardon me. Yes, Grasshopper. What was wrong with my last dive? The perfect dive should leave no trace of the diver upon the water. As you seek perfection in your dives, seek perfection in your splashes. Uh, are you saying that my splashes are too big? Yes. You might try making your form more uh, aerodynamic. Like that of a swordfish. Fish or aerodynamic? Aloha. May your life be big and your splashes be small. Okay, so if we were to look at DePoyo, he's kind of got a bit of a triangle head thing going on there. Well, Skybrush is a little more flat. So that's going to be a problem. We'll have to see if we can fix that. But first, let's go to the beach down here. Uh, I thought there was a boat around here somewhere. Okay, hang on. Can I get to the... Whoops, no. Go, go this way. Can I get to this other part of the beach? What is happening? Why can't I walk anywhere? There we go. 
So can I go around this here? No, it's gonna come up. Okay, so let me look at the beach here. Now that's a beautiful beach. If you think it's pretty now, imagine how much nicer it'll be with the addition of three dozen picturesque timeshare holiday bungalows. How could that possibly be an improvement? Variety, son, the spice of life. An empty beach is about as exciting as a blank canvas, know what I mean? Not really. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm totally wrong. I don't need to go here. I need to go to the, I need to go back to the port. And there's a rowboat out there. Okay. Let's go back this way. Boy, mateys. Set sail for Family Pond at Planet Threepwood. See souvenirs of Guybrush Threepwood's most famous escapade. All right, here's a community rowboat. Let's use the rowboat. All right, make our way over to Nut Natal. Fire! Aye! Get over here! Uh, hello, sir. Can I help you? Are you crazy? You could have killed me! Crazy? I'm not the one flagrantly violating the rules and regulations of nothing at all. Huh? What's your name, sailor? Ivana Tinkle. <laughs> None of your business. Uh, Guybrush Threepwood, sir. Uh, now, Mr. Threepwood, what is your business on nothing at all? Again, none of your business. I'm just looking around, sir. Very good, Mr. Threepwood. Now, before I allow you to pass, do you have any questions? Who are you? Who the heck are you? My name is Ricardo Luigi Piat Mbenga Cheng Nehru O'Hara Kasaba III. But you can call me Admiral Kasaba. Okay. Why are you firing cannonballs? Why are you firing cannonballs at innocent pirates? Mr. Threepwood, it is my experience that there are only two kinds of pirates. Those who are committing acts of wanton savagery and those planning to commit acts of wanton savagery. If you allow groups of the latter to congregate for any length of time, they inevitably transform into mobs of the former. What was that middle part again? <laughs> I'll just I be think going. I'll just be on my merry way. Good lad. Remember, I'm watching you. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, back to nothing at all. I think I have to get over here. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's move on to Prog for that zombie's neck. Hey, what about Wine Says? Right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's move on to. Who are you? Ah, I be Hellbeard, the unrepentant, the scourge of the seven seas. Can I talk to your puppeteer? Puppeteer? Hellbeard, the unrepentant, is no my puppet! Arr! Um... Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Talk to the hand, you nosy scupper scraper. Okay, how about the other puppet? Can I talk to the other puppet? Puppet? There be no puppets here, boy. There be only the unrelenting terror of Hellbeard! Arr! <laughs> Seriously, where's the other puppet? Get this through your lice-infested skull, cabin boy. There be no puppets. There be only Hellbeard. Um, do you know anything about the ultimate insult? The ultimate insult? Never heard of it. But I said I never heard of it. Hellbeard, I think I've heard of you. Yeah, of course you've heard of me. I'm the nastiest pirate in the world! Okay, I think I need to... Wait a minute. Hellbeard the Unrepentant died over 80 years ago. Do I look dead to you? No, you look like a sock. See ya, Hellbeard. I heard those sarcastic quotes, you scab-covered whale whipper! I think I need to talk to the other... Um... Puppet first. I need to leave now. Uh, what the... Alright, hang on, go back. Well, yes, but I think you need to rationalize. 
you again. Oh, no, that's... If you're Hellbeard, where have you been for the past 80 years? I am... Uh, oh, here we go. Look! Over there! Who are you? I'm Hellbeard the Unrepentant, of course. Why can I only talk to one of you at a time? Because of that paranoid jerk, Admiral Kasaba. Whenever he sees three or more pirates talking, he assumes they're plotting some sort of mischief. So he lobs a cannonball at them. Can't he tell the difference between pirates and puppets? I don't know if you've noticed. But Cassava's not too bright. So Cassava doesn't know the difference between puppets and pirates. Okay. Can I talk to your puppeteer? I'd rather you didn't. We're trying to protect him. Come on, let me talk to the puppeteer. Yeah, all right, but don't make any sudden moves. I'll be as gentle as a baby dolphin. You must be Hellbeer. If you say so, sir. Um... Why do your puppets look like me and LeChuck? Puppets? Uh, what puppets? Wow, you are a basket case, aren't you? Yes, sir. Very good, sir. I think I'll leave you alone. Thank you, kind sir. Maybe you know something about this. Could you tell me about this, please? Could you help me find this? <laughs> What's that? It's a picture of the ultimate insult. <laughs> the ultimate insult? <laughs> well, that was the thing. Hey, you forgot your puppets! Gee, guess that was just the kind of breakthrough he needed to mend his shattered psyche. Okay, let's pick up these puppets, and we'll call that a video. All right. Yeah, I better put these away before Kasaba flings a cannonball at me. Yep. All right, let's save. Okay, as always, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Make sure you take a look at the other videos on the GSL YouTube channel. Check out officialytr.com slash forums for more fun, and myself at twitch.tv slash chaoscontrolchannel. And I'll see you for next week's video. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.